Dear George and Eric, in a last letter I wrote to Mum, I said I would write the next one to you, and have chosen today, Sunday, as I have much leisure time, and I hope to tell you, at the moment I am sitting on my bed, and directly below, I am one stair up, there is the infant school, which I mentioned before, where the kiddies sing No Passaran internationally and a song about the International Brigade. The wee girls are all Since I have old. come here, I have never seen a sweetie. So we'll know especially what the children here are. Some have great red bows in their heads. Well, fellas, I have no more to write just now. So we'll keep close hoping that you, George, have made progress with your violin. I could do fine with you here, Eric, to sew on buttons. I suppose you will be going up to see your grandpa and grandma. Hope you're all well. Your dad's best love. Salute, camaradas. Must have made you feel very proud. At the end of August 1938, the Scots who fought Franco were holding firm in Catalonian mountains. They remained deeply committed to the cause, despite monstrous conditions and heavy losses. Yet their fate was set not in battle, but in the corridors of power. In late September, the Republican government announced the withdrawal of the international brigades. They believed that the move would force Hitler and Mussolini to remove their troops from Spain. It was a forlorn hope. Surviving Scots marched through the streets of Barcelona as part of an emotional farewell parade. Hundreds of thousands of Catalans lined the streets to salute the heroes of the international brigades. The great Republican leader, La Passionaria, paid tribute to their efforts, telling them, You can go with pride. You are history. You are legend. We will not forget you. And you women of Spain, Tell your children, tell them of the international brigades. Tell them how from across the seas and the mountains these men came to our lands. You gave up all to come here and to tell us your cause, the cause of Spain is ours also. Many of them, thousands of them remain here and their shroud is the soil of Spain. The Spanish Republic the Scots had set out to defend was eventually defeated in the spring of 1939. The fascists marched victorious into Madrid and Franco established a dictatorship that lasted for 36 years. I came back with the main British contingent, you know, in the uh, beginning of December 1938 and we got a tremendous reception of Victoria Station in London and then we went to... Uh, 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 then after a day or two, uh, the Scots went up in a contingent, we went up in a bus, I think, up to Glasgow, where we were, there was a reception for us in the City Hall in Glasgow, and there was a tremendous reception there. Throughout his life, George Gowans faced questions about his time in Spain. They're all interested in why did you go, and what did you do? And uh, it's a strange thing that nowadays, when you've been through two world wars, nobody asks you what you've done in the last world war. They always ask you what you've done in Spain. Spain has come prominent in history compared to what it did in these times. But the thing is that I wasn't long back from Spain till the Second World War started. So there wasn't much time of communication between anybody now. And nowadays, uh, to, if you're asked to go to speak at a burn supper or anything like that, the first thing that comes up is Spain. Yeah. They tell me you're in Spain. What did you do? Though the sacrifices of international brigaders are not recognised on official war memorials, across the country, ordinary Scots have erected monuments and many more are in the offing. Scotland is refusing to forget. John Tadden. John McClanders, Malcolm Smith, Andrew Finnan, Ken Stalker, Dave Sampson, 
John Ness. John Black. William John Moody. Tom Brown. Tom Buck. Pat Cuddly. John Charlie. James Murray. Ken Murray. James Perry. John Alex Machine, John Ross, Adam D. Meredith. I've seen people reduced to tears, uh, remembering friends who died. Scottish friends who died, Spanish friends who died. And I know of, there, there are some people who don't like to talk about it at all, and their families say that they, they very seldom talked about it afterwards because of the horrors that they saw. And the, you know, the incredible, uh, you know, the incredible courage they must have, courage they must have had to face every day. So there must have been a turning point somewhere between the great hope, and that in itself is almost like a microcosm of the war itself. You know, the great hope of uh, the middle of the, the 20th century, of the world could be a much better, more egalitarian, more just place. And then you suddenly see, you know, the whites of Franco's troops' eyes, or, uh, or the Nazi troops in the, in the later war. But I still think they brought away with them a sense of hope. Okay, we were defeated in that one. Um, and it was, it was hell for Spain particularly. But the very fact that so many people spontaneously rose up, made their own way to Spain, you know, small groups of people, is in itself a fantastic source of hope. The democracy Scottish volunteers fought to protect in Spain was not restored until after Franco's death in 1975. In contrast to Scotland, there was a desire in Spain to forget the Civil War. Journalist Sid Lowe discovered the reasons behind this when he moved to Madrid to cover Spanish football for the Guardian newspaper. One of the key factors in the transition from, from post-Francoism and his regime into a democratic regime, which they have now, was, was a, a collective pact of silence, a, a collective pact of forgetting. And it was very consciously, let's not talk about the past as a way of moving on to the future. Culturally, uh, I think psychologically, emotionally and socially, Spain is still a country that, that's marked by, by what happened, not just between 1936 and 1939, but of course the next 40 years under a Franco dictatorship. Journalist and author Giles Tremlett describes the impact of the silence on daily life. One of the things we've discovered from this whole process is that Spaniards don't still agree on what happened during the Civil War. They don't agree on the interpretation of the Civil War. They don't agree about how good or bad Franco was. was. They don't even agree about what the, the Republic was like, whether it was good or bad. And so all those uh, old wounds, if you want, which had been uh, silenced during Franco's years and then sort of kept under the carpet uh, during the first years of democracy, well, all those things have reappeared. When I've gone to speak uh, to people in villages, uh, I found that often um, you can be talking to someone perfectly normally in the street about what happened during the Civil War and that suddenly a neighbour will walk by and that they'll either shut up completely or start whispering to you simply because they don't want that neighbour to hear what they're saying because that neighbour was almost certainly on the other side of the of the Civil War. His family was on the other side of the Civil War and there's blood between them. Um, uh, some people say there were two sides to the Civil War. Another theory is that actually there were 2,000 sides to the Civil War, that each village was divided in two and that actually uh, what really hurts in Spain is the fact that the killings were done in each village by other people from that village and that after the bloodbath was over everybody had to keep on living together. And that was the real, the real problem.